the formidable robot. Third of May 2019, the MRB office, New Aberdeen Vesteria. Three executives from Cartoon Network walked into the building and met with the VMRB officials. Coming in, they gave the Vesterian officials a USB drive and told them it contained an episode of the cartoon The Amazing World of Gumball they needed to review. Naturally, they decided to insert it into the TV in the office and play the episode. It was not one but two episodes bunched together, as they noticed the video was as long as two normal TAWOG episodes. And the first episode was the disaster. But one minor change to the ending was all it took to start the domino effect. So the cut of the ending they received had the remote slip from Gumball during his fall into the void. Seconds later, Gumball began to glitch, and bang. Gumball vanished from his world and ended up in the void. The BMRB officials froze. Struck with the awful realization that Gumball had been destroyed, they were anything but amazed as the logo just played out without the credits. Then the other episode aired, and the chief executive managed to snap everyone out of their paralysis and got them to focus on the next episode. But they didn't know what would come next. The other episode was called, The Spin-Off, and it began with Gumball in the void. He was panicked from the revelation that Rob finally did away from him and was wondering what was going on in his show, but then the new intro of the show played, and it was basically edited to look like Rob was the star, even reading, The Amazing World of Rob, instead. Then there was a montage of Elmore becoming more and more glitched, Nicole and Richard turning glitched and becoming loyal to Rob, Darwin glitching and vanishing into nothing, etc., all of them consequences of Rob's getting rid of Gumball. Once the changes all stopped, Rob finally got his wish. He was now able to rule over Elmore without breaking a sweat. It cut into a seemingly normal episode, with the now godlike Rob going about his daily shenanigans without Gumball for him to deal with anymore. Then the episode ended with Rob glaring diabolically at the viewers and the video glitching out, with the credits that would have normally aired on other Gumball episodes playing over it and then the logos after that. The BMRB officials were frozen once more. One of them, Jacqueline Lacroix, shook her head in disbelief. Of course, she cannot believe what she saw. She immediately confronted the Cartoon Network officials about it, they told them it wasn't their fault they made the episode, and it had actually been requested by, well, you guessed it. Joseph Kell once again. They stood to confront him, as he was visiting Vesteria, and when he entered, Lacroix walked up to him and confronted Kella about the matter, and Kella responded by saying that he didn't really order it, it was Henry Conserves who blamed Gumball for being violent that made him request such a cruel ending to a show about a blue cat, his family and friends. Lacroix immediately realized and decided to spare Kella for the time being, with Kella walking out in dishonor. The CN executives apologized to them, telling them it wasn't their fault and Kala was not wrong. The executives decided to sit down and continue talking with the officials before they left. Twenty third of December, twenty nineteen, New Aberdeen, Vesteria. It was a chilly day in the Vesterian capital city, New Aberdeen. No, not chilly as in snowing, but the kind of chilly felt in the Philippines during rainy days. Many Vesterians have started hanging stockings on the walls, setting up their Christmas trees, and even buying Christmas feast ingredients. But that day was a day the Vesterian cartoon fanbase will never get out of their minds. The day the bad ending to the popular cartoon series The Amazing World of Gumball aired on national television. This story will focus on a family in Midtown New Aberdeen, the McMurrays. Joe and Henny were your average parents, their elder brother Charles was your archetypal gamer, and the younger brother and sister David and Davina, both twins, were fans of Gumball. They lived happily in their apartment block, which was in clear view of Robson Walk, or the Vesterian Times Square Shibuya Crossing. On that fateful day, the children were now sitting on the couch, hyped for the final episode of Gumball. The brother thought this was a joke, but turns out, the whole ending thing was anything but a joke, and the ending would be nothing short of grim. The omen that would decide on the fate of the show was a caption, in the style of the episodes and credits. The disclaimer read. Heads up. 
What you're about to see is a cut of the following episode that would have been used in Indonesia. The ending will make you go what, so stay tuned to find out the change in it. So their parents had already prepared some cheese coated fries with marinara sauce dip for them to eat on the night of the world premiere. As the episode progressed, the three were unprepared for the grim turn of events that were to come, for one minor change was nothing but a trigger for the domino effect that would lead to the series plot taking a very very depressing turn for the worse. As the episode reached its end, they noticed one small problem that would have big consequences. They noticed that Gumball didn't catch the remote in time, and so he began to glitch, until he was just as corrupted looking as Rob. It was at this moment the kids knew. Gumball had been done away with, and Rob has triumphed. The entire nation had their jaws dropped at the sad realization. But it was just the beginning of the end for Gumball. There was an extra episode. It was called, The Spin-Off. David and Davina were petrified, while Charles gave no crap, because he was tired of good endings and wanted to see the consequences of Rob's victory. But hey, he did pay attention, because he would like what happened next. Gumball, now a glitched up helpless clone, was panicked at his new appearance. Looking into a, discarded, mirror, he screamed so much the mirror broke in his face. Now even more panicked, he was wondering what was going on in his world without him. Then the standard Gumball intro played. Except it looked corrupted the same way Rob had been, as well as bits of degradation like what was shown in the money. Then the logo was edited to read, The Amazing World of Rob, instead. The National Gumball fanbase were even more petrified at the next scene. Cut to Elmore becoming corrupted and degraded at the same time. The wave spread until everything else was fully changed. Darwin vanished, Nicole and Richard became their correct ages, but also as corrupted as Rob, and now turned into his obedient slaves, and the worst part of it all, Gumball's house vanished like it never existed in the first place, but there was a gravestone that read, Gumball burns in hell, with the burn in hell part in graffiti. Much like Perry White. The new Elmore was called, Rob though. Now, the whole show was littered with nothing but total villainy, depression, chaos, outdated mullets, hairsprays, and the YOLO hashtag. Enter Rob, now a super-powered king who is happy from not only destroying Gumball, but also taking over Elmore and the show proper. The new episode showed Rob going around town, going around his daily shenanigans without having to deal with Gumball. The show had become nothing more than a show in the style of a political comedy about a dictator. After Rob went around doing his trash, he gave out a diabolical smirk, as the video glitched out. Then, the credits played out as normal, as did the Cartoon Network BSE logo. David and Davina were most shocked. So shocked they couldn't move, like they'd been exposed to Medusa. But Charles managed to snap them out of their figurative petrification and told them what they experienced. Instead, they began to cry from how devastated they were at losing Gumball. Tearfully, they told Charles everything they saw in near complete detail before rushing off to bed to cry themselves to sleep. The ending was never aired again.